Would you like a simple approach to crafting melodies? In this video, we'll give you the solution to your problem, phrasing. By following melodies on a screen or page, you can see and appreciate the lines and curves of the melody. You don't need any music theory knowledge to do this, you're simply looking at the shapes and contours. A phrase is a section or unit of the melody which makes musical sense on its own. Being able to look at and change phrases by thinking about their shape and direction can help you to craft better melodies. Let's now explore the art of phrasing through five simple tips. Tip number one, treat your melodies like language. We're speaking English in this video, but think about this in any language you like. If you break down how languages are spoken, they have different tunes or phrases which provide emphasis in different places. We use punctuation, paragraphs, sentences, and other devices to combine groups of words and give them meaning and context. This allows us to communicate more complex ideas with ease. Another important thing it allows is the ability for the speaker to breathe. Luckily for us, you can also treat your melodies like a language. Think of melodic phrases as sentences. They work as a single unit conveying a particular melodic idea. You can also compare the phrase to a spoken sentence with a rising and falling inflection of the voice. Where you place the emphasis can change the meaning or feeling of the phrase. For example, if you speak English, you'll know that asking a question will change how the words are spoken with a rising inflection at the end of the sentence. This will change the meaning of the sentence. You can use these sort of ideas in your melodic work to invoke different emotions. Also consider where the breaks in your melody will be to allow a singer to breathe. Even if you're playing the melody on an instrument that doesn't require breath, the natural breaks help to split up ideas into manageable and memorable chunks as discussed. Another consideration of language and therefore melodies is the volume of phrases and section of melodies. This could be adding volume at crescendos or high points of the phrase and reducing volume for the descent, therefore adding interest and emotion. We won't cover this in detail here, but it is another element of language that you can consider with your melodic phrases. Time for the next tip. Tip number two, after leaps use small steps, and after small steps have leaps. The distance between each note in your melody will change how it feels. Thinking about this in lines or shapes, a small step would be a straight line or gentle slope, and a leap would be the opposite, like a steep hill or cliff. Let's look at some examples to demonstrate this. We'll use the C major scale to craft our phrases, but this isn't important in this video. Concentrate on the shape and direction of the phrases. We'll use Hookpad for these visualizations. Hookpad is an excellent piece of songwriting software, which anyone can use even if they can't read music. Follow the link in the description below to try Hookpad for yourself. In this first example, we jump from C up to A. Then we step to G and back to A. Listen to how the small steps sound after the leap. For comparison, look at what happens if we raise the G by an octave. The shape looks completely different, more like a mountain range. Here's how that sounds. Let's now reverse the situation and start with some small steps, which lead to a leap. And for comparison, we'll end the same phrase with steps this time. Listen to how it changes the feel of the melody. You may have noticed that as well as steps and leaps, Phrases can have a rising or falling nature. Balancing these elements will be important in telling your melody's story. Let's look at the same set of notes. In the first example, they'll be arranged in a rising pattern. Then in the second example, we'll use a descending pattern. Listen out for the change in feel. Thinking back to our discussion in tip number one, you could also think of the rising phrase as a question and the descending phrase as an answer. Remember your melody is a series of phrases and the way they work together will impact the whole song. On to the next tip. Tip number three. Sometimes a little asymmetry can be a beautiful thing. Popular music loves even numbers, in particular the number four. 
you'll see four, eight and sixteen bar song sections everywhere. These will normally be played in a 4-4 time signature with four beats in a bar. This all feels comfortable and safe because it is so widely used. And if you break away from this, it can take a listener out of their comfort zone. But it will also make your melody or phrase stand out from the crowd. Experiment with phrases that have an odd number of bars and see if it better helps to create the sound that you are after. Let's look at a two bar phrase and then spread it over three bars. See how it changes the feel of the phrase. Tip number four, it's good to have a break. If we think back to tip number one and using language, in particular written English, an important tool is the paragraph. It provides a break between text and signifies a change in point or idea. Songs can also benefit from breaks. Melody phrases can be separated by a few non-vocal instrumental bars. These can be to give the singer a breather or to take the song to a new place. If you're repeating phrases, then they will benefit from coming back after a break. Breaks are easy to see visually in your phrasing and a useful songwriting tool that are often not thought about. In our example, we'll repeat a phrase a couple of times, then have a four bar break before bringing in a new phrase. Listen out for the difference the break brings. Tip number five, take it high. We spoke earlier about how higher notes are often emphasized by playing them louder. If you look at lyrics, there are also places where highly emotive words appear in order to make them stand out. Because they stand out so much, the highest note in a phrase can be used like emphasis in a word or sentence. If you've got something you want to highlight, make it the highest note. In our first example, we'll take an existing phrase and on the second repeat, we'll put a single note up an octave for emphasis. You'll hear this all the time in singing without thinking about it. It is usually dramatic when a melody has a held high note at the end of a section. Let's take our previous example and tweak it to accommodate this. We'll now put all of the phrasing ideas together in a melody. As before, look at the lines and contours that the melody has and don't worry too much about the individual notes. When writing your own phrases, think about the shape and direction of the song and how the melody will achieve this. Whilst phrasing is a powerful starting point, you've not learned everything about melodies. You now need to learn what notes to put in your phrases to make them shine. Watch this video to really understand the melody writing process. 